It is uterus sacral uh, ligaments uh, that, which are involved by uh, the pathology. You have here an example. Here it, it is a normal uterus sacral ligament. And the uterus sacral ligament is involved. You have uh, this pattern of uh, pathology like this with irregular uh, border like you see here on this slide. It is important to um, recognize uh, the, the additions uh, <coughs> just behind the uterus. Here you have a digestive location here and uh, the rectum and the uterus are sticked together uh, and there is no sliding sign. You know the sliding sign, it is important uh, to recognize the sliding sign. Uh, it, uh, it, it means that there is no additions. Here you have the example. Another one. Okay. So you have example of rectal involvement with ultrasound. It is um, implanted along, along one wall of the rectus sigmoid, uh, presenting a semilunar uh, morphology that you have here, here, and here with irregular border and it's quite easy to make the diagnosis with ultrasound because there is a hypo-echoic um, pattern like you said, like, like you, as you see here. The bladder involvement um, is quite easy to do but you, you have uh, your passion has to have the bladder with fluid inside because uh, if it is empty, you can, can't see uh, the lesions here that you have on this slide and that you have on this slide. So it is important to keep some uh, little quantity of fluid in the, in the bladder uh, to underline the border uh, of the bladder. <coughs> The ovary adhesions, it is um, an element very important in infertility because uh, it uh, creates disovulation. Here you have a normal ovary, it is very important to make compression. You can see that when you move the ovary, there is no adhesions, everything is moving. When you have adhesion, when you uh, put your the, uh, the other hand and you make palpation, you have ovary <laughs> completely additioned with uterus like you have here. There is no space between the ovary and the uterus. It is very important to recognize this sign, the presence of additions. Here you have uh, the visceral sliding testing sign. You can see that here it is normal, there's no adhesions. Uterus uh, is moving uh, alone and uh, there is a, um, a separation between rectal wall and uterus. So there's no adhesions with uterus. So when we had to perform MRI, because you can see that uh, ultrasound is very helpful and uh, can diagnose a lot of pathology, we think that um, MRI is mostly important for, um, to um, diagnose endometriosis pathology and to precise the mapping of endometriosis lesions. It is an MRI technical suggestion uh, that we do uh, in our uh, bachelor center. You have, uh, we, the patient is fasting uh, more than three hours. There is a rectal preparation with microlax in France. We have that. Uh, there is uh, two main plane of acquisition in T2 uh, weighted and uh, one actual T1 and with and without uh, fat saturation. There is a gadolinium injection. And you can see that it is quite um, easier to diagnose superficial endometriosis because you have the hypersignal T1 here and uh, you can see there are some little foci of endometriosis uh, that, you can, that you can't do uh, with your trust node. I don't know how is the time. Uh, <laughs> it's good? 
An example of difficulty to uh, characterize the titular uh, differentiation, you have here a doubt uh, between endometrioma and luteal cyst or dermoid cyst. Uh, you perform MRI and you can see that with hypersignal T1 like here, it is uh, absolutely uh, she, um, endometrioma. Here, what is it? Endometrioma or dermoid cyst? Or other? What is your answer? Endometrioma? Endometrioma. So we perform MRI. You have a hypersignal T1 like this. So maybe it is an endometrioma. Then when you do a fat situation, you can see that there is a hypersignal T1. So it was not an endometrioma, but a dermoid cyst. MRI can provide um, the complete mapping for endometriosis with a large field of view. For example, here are normal uterosacral ligament. It is not possible to see the normal uterosacral ligament with ultrasound, but with the MRI you can see the normal structure, so it is very uh, uh, easy uh, and uh, uh, it is very helpful to make the diagnosis. Here you have a normal pattern of uterosacral ligament, and here you have an, an involvement of the uterosacral ligament. So you can see that there is a uterosacral thickened that you see here. The torus uterinum with uh, the hyposignal T2 lesion, typical of endometriosis, uh, like a moustache pattern. Here you can see another example of uh, torus involvement, like you see here, with a hypersignal nodule here, and uterus acroligamon involvement uh, that you can see here on the actual sequence. Deep infiltrating on the metriosis lesion, what is better, ultrasound or MRI? You can see that MRI is quite superior uh, when you talk about uh, some sensitivity uh, on all those studies. Normal ureter, it is very important to say to the surgeon uh, if there is or not involvement, uh, uter ureteral involvement, because uh, the surgery is uh, quite difficult when there is uh, ureteral involvement. And when, with MRI, you can follow the normal ureter, so it is a very great tool uh, to, to say to the surgeon if there is involvement or not. You can provide um, uh, uro MRI and you can see the level of the stenosis that you have here with the dilatation of the kidney that you have here. Digestive lesions, here uh, it is uh, a, a very beautiful picture but in the real life it's not like that because you have a lot of fecal impaction like you see here and um, uh, it is quite easier to, um, to diagnose the lesion in the actual uh, plan because you can see that the signal of the lesion is in the same intensity uh, than the myometrium that you see here. Skip lesions on the colon, on the sigmoid, uh, it is important to diagnose them. You have um, a lesion here on the sigmoid and with uh, T1 you can see that there is a big nodule here in T1 acquisition. Here it is an example of fusion acquisition that uh, Professor Laura Salomon uh, will talk about uh, tomorrow um, with in the obstetric um, field, but in gynecology field you can uh, perform the fusion MRI. It is a fusion between the MRI acquisition and the ultrasound and you can compare all those lesions. Here you have this movie. You see the MRI, it is exactly the same plant. You have a digestive nodule uh, here and it is a tool to diagnose it on the MRI when you compare the both <coughs> acquisition. Another example here, <coughs> MRI, MRI and ultrasound. You can see the uterosacral ligament here, 
that you can't see on the ultrasound because only MRI can see the normal ultrasound. And you have the digestive location here in the ultrasound that you can uh, see here on the MRI. And for that, we think that uh, ultrasound for digestive vision is quite superior uh, for experienced uh, operator. You, um, ultrasound is quite better than uh, MRI. Well, location, MRI is superior to uh, comparing to uh, ultrasound because you can see the sacrorectal genital pubic blade that is an uh, important uh, structure that you, that, that you can see here. And you can see here that there is a static nerve involvement uh, due to endometriosis, but you cannot diagnose this lesion uh, with only ultrasound. So MRI is very uh, helpful and uh, you can see that both imaging are complementary. Here it is an example of static nerve involvement. Subcutaneous wall lesions, it is easier to uh, do the diagnosis with MRI. You can see the nodule, the hypersignal T2 uh, nodule here on the right of the pelvis. So I don't know if you have questions, but thank you very much.